Hello, it's a pretty lovely, lovely evening once again from here in Tally and hope that each one of you as usual are keeping yourself fine and happy and of course in fine spirits. So moving over to section B and <clears throat> as far as section B of your model paper 2, I'm talking about new syllabus. Correct, section A we have already covered and now we are moving over to section B <clears throat> and let's see actually how many questions today we can cover up. So as far as your question number two is concerned, D Limited has incurred the following transaction in respect of acquiring a plant in exchange of an old plant. <clears throat> so this time actually the entity D Limited has incurred following transaction in respect of an exchange of old plant. Correct? Remember one thing. So opening lines are quite vital. And further, of course, needless to add that this particular question is from your end AS16 property plant and equipment the old site was dismantled at a cost of rupees 16,000 now your old site was there and it was dismantled and no estimate no estimated dismantling cost was capitalized for the old plant what does it mean that mean you have completely dismantled the site and this cost will not form this cost will not be capitalized means this cost will not form part of the what we call new plant which we are going to actually get further the question says that scrap from the old site was sold for rupees 2000 actually when you are dismantling the old plant you are incurring the cost so old machinery account debit or old site account debit to bank account 16,000 that will be your normal entry and similarly now you have realized some amount from what we call scrap so bank account debit to old plant account or old machinery account whatever it is so this scrap will have no connection as far as cost of new plant is concerned now the new site was constructed new site was constructed at a cost of 96,000 quite obviously we are going to consider it as the cost of course the supplier of the new plant agreed to take away the old plant at a fair value of 352,000 now question says that the supplier has agreed to take the <coughs> supplier of the new plant has agreed to take away the old plant at a fair value of 352,000 so supplier whom is supplying us the new plant he has he told us that he will take the old plant at 3,52,000. What replication it will have, I will let you know. So right now, as far as new plant cost is concerned, first of all, 96,000 is the only item so far. The new plant price is 6,40,000. It will also form the part of cost of the new plant. Now question says that the carrying amount of old plant was 2 lakh. Carrying amount is 2 lakh, correct? Present value of dismantling the site is 32,000. See, we are now taking up, uh, now we are taking in a new plant. Quite obviously, we may have to actually build a new site. But when we build a new site, we also try to estimate that ultimately what will be the cost when we will dismantle the site. Correct? Under India 16, actually, we have taken up some examples regarding the debt. So whenever we actually construct the site, ultimately we will have to dismantle it and ultimately we will have to incur some costs. Generally, we take the present value and here the present value is given to you. So the present value of dismantling the site, which you are going to, of course, construct for the new plant, it will form part of the what we call cost of the new plant. Wages paid for installation 8,000 and for trial run 3,200 will also form part of the new cost. Freight paid will also be part of new cost. Now, in your module, they have completely ignored GST. So, you also simply try to ignore the GST. Then further, it is given that loss amounting to 80,000 for the low capacity utilization of the plant after the installation. So, any loss if you are going to incur for low capacity utilization, in that case, actually, it will not form part of the new cost. It will simply be expensed. Now, 20,000 was paid as cost of launching the product to produce from the plant. Now, again, this is not connected to the cost of the plant. So, as far as cost of the new plant is concerned, we have seen so far, one is 96,000 and then 6,40,000, the price of the new plant, the dismantling cost, then 3,200, 16,000, 80,000, 20,000. So, these are the costs given to us so far. Now, First of all, question is asking us what is the 
cost at which initially this new machinery will be recognized. Of course, cost of construction of new site as I told you, the price of the new plant and present value of dismantling, installation and trial run. Installation and trial run means actually 8,000 plus 3,200. So all these will be part of the cost and freight. So machinery at initial cost will be recognized at 7,95,200. This will be the answer. However, in order to make you understand, Institute has also provided you what we call some entries. For example, as I told you earlier, when I am going to actually dismantle the old site wherein my old plant was there, so I will have to incur some expenses. So old machinery account, debit to cash account, this will be the entry for dismantlation. And then we realize something out of old machinery scrap. So cash account, debit to old machinery account, this is the entry, 2000. Now, you have to understand this point. Cost of the new machinery is 7,95,200, we have just seen. Now, old machinery is moving out. Now, try to understand. The carrying amount of old machinery was 2 lakh. And then you incurred 16,000 on dismantling of the old machine. Are you getting my point or not? So, your old machinery cost will increase because of dismantling. You can see old machinery is being debited. So, the carrying amount of old machinery is 2 lakh. It will go up by 16,000. Now, here you have credited old machinery by 2,000. So, due to scrap sale, the cost of old machinery will come down or the carrying amount of the old machinery will come down. So, we may say that old machinery right now is having a net carrying amount of 2,40,000 and your supplier has agreed to take it for how much actually 2,52,000 your supplier told that he will pay you 2,52,000 isn't it or not so that means carrying amount net carrying amount of your old machinery is 2 lakh 50 2 lakh 14000 while your supplier is paying you 2 lakh 52000 or he's taking up this particular machinery at 2 lakh 52000 quite obviously you will have a profit so profit will be equal to 38000 your mold, your old machinery is moving out of your premises now and it is having a net cost of 2 lakh 14000 or net carrying amount of 2 lakh 14 now your supplier has given you a machinery worth rupees 6,40,000 because this is the purchase price of the machinery. I am not talking about the cost. It is the purchase price of the machinery. So, he is giving you new machinery at a price of 6,40,000 while he is taking up your old machinery for 2,52,000. So, that being the net amount you are supposed to pay to the supplier is this much, 6,40,000. 6,40,000 minus 2,52,000. That is exactly what is written to supplier. So, you are supposed to pay to the supplier. And that is 3,88,000. Then, you incur some expenses on freight installation. And freight installation on wages, etc. And construction of the site to the extent of 1,23,200. How this 1,23,200, I will let you know. See here. Construction. Construction site 96,000, you add 96 plus 11,200 installation in trial run and freight 16,000. So, it will amount to actually this much, correct? 1,23,200. And second, you are, you are also estimating some cost of dismantling. So, liability for dismantling account is equal to 32,000. This is how you can pass down the entries also. Now, next question is, on 31st of March 2022, X Limited and Y Limited were amalgamated into Z Limited. Now, this time what is happening, there are two companies, X Limited and Y Limited. And they are getting amalgamated into Z Limited. So, both these companies are getting amalgamated into a single unit. Indirectly, it means, and so often I have been telling this way around that whenever such a situation is given you always presume that now jet limited will be considered as purchasing company or acquirer company and these two entities will be considered as acquiry company so you will have you will have to presume this way around that jet limited the acquirer company is taking over x limited and jet limited is also taking over y limited because z is acquirer company z is supposed to actually pay the amount of consideration to X and Y limited. 
on 31st of March, X and Y Limited were amalgamated into Jet Limited. Now, question further says that control of the business is lying with the same parties as before. However, point here is that the control of Jet Limited, now the question says, actually is lying in the hands of X Limited and Y Limited. Problem is this. So, when control lies with the same party, we know it is known as a case of com common control. It is known as a case of common control. When even after the merger, control lies with the same parties, quite obviously because both these parties are forming actually Jet Limited. So, quite obviously they will command the what we call control. So, that is the reason it will become a case of common control. Is it clear to you or not? Now, question says that Jet Limited will issue 40,000 equity shares to X Limited and 37,500 shares to Y Limited at the nominal value of rupees 10 each. Now question has clearly given us that Z Limited will pay 40,000 shares of rupees 10 each to X Limited, 40,000 shares of rupees 10 that is equal to 4 lakh and further Z Limited will issue 37,500 shares, 37,500 shares of rupees 10 each that is equal to 3,75,000, 3,75,000, correct? That means this much of amount they will issue to X Limited and this much they will issue to Y Limited. So, so far we can say 7,75,000 worth of consideration we would deliver to both these entities. The book value of X Limited's net assets were 6 lakh. Now question says that book value of X Limited is 6 lakh. As far as X Limited is concerned, it has got net assets worth rupees 6 lakhs and its equity share capital is 2 lakh 50 thousand and other equity is 3 lakh 50 thousand. Question has also given that its equity share capital is equal to 6 lakh, sorry equity share capital is equal to 2 lakh 50 thousand. So I am going to write here 2 lakh 50 thousand. And it is also given that other equity, other equity as you know, profit and loss account, general reserve, etc. 3,50,000. This is the situation in this particular case. Then in the next line, question states that fair value of net assets is equal to 8 lakh. And we know that under common control, we are not concerned with fair value. This is the fair value given to us, but it will hardly have any, if it will hardly have any effect as far as accounting is concerned. Then as far as Y Limited is concerned, net assets of Y Limited is given to you as 5 lakh, equity share capital 2 lakh and other equity 3 lakh. So net assets of Y Limited is equal to 5 lakh. And then you have been given equity share capital equal to 2 lakh and further other equity to the extent of 3 lakh. This is the scenario, correct? And just to confuse you further, they have also given the fair value of net assets of Y Limited, again this information will become irrelevant. This information will become irrelevant because fair value has no role to play, correct, under common control. Suggest the management about the method of accounting to be followed in the given situation and determine the amount of goodwill. As per Appendix C, correct, because regarding common control under India 103, under what we call Appendix C, some what we call guidelines are given and if the control lies with the same party before and after the transaction then it becomes a case of common control number one if it is a case of common control then in the books of acquirer in the books of acquirer we will pass the entry in this manner number one all the asset will be taken over not at fair value rather at nominal value or book value sorry and all the liabilities will be taken over at book value only and besides that, we will also take over their other equity. Actually, right from our earlier phases of education, we have been confused by this particular term that purchasing company will take the uh, general reserve and profit or loss account of the other entity under pooling and pooling interest method. What I want to say here is that as we have seen that both X and Y are having some other equity also besides what we call net assets, they are having some equity. For example, 3,50,000 worth of equity is having, is with what we call uh, X limited and other equity balance of Y limited is equal to 3 lakh. 
logically when a particular company will take over the other com company it cannot take over its share capital we cannot take over their share capital we cannot take over their other equity or reserves and surplus whatever you may call it logically it is not possible still under the common control we say that purchasing company will take over the other equity of what we call acquiring company how it is possible on the one side i am saying that purchasing company can take over only assets and liability they can never ever take the share capital or other equity of the, the company which are being taken over and still now we are maintaining that as per appendix c pooling interest method will be adopted and as per pooling interest method the rule is that all the assets and liability will be taken over at book value besides we are going to take over the other equity item actually we will not take the other equity item rather we will preserve their entity and what we mean by preserve their entity it means in order to preserve their entity the acquirer company from its own resources from its own resources will have to create other equity to the extent of 3.5 and 3 lakh that is the point here are you getting my point or not we are not taking them over rather we will have to create from our resources equity equal to this much that is what we mean by we are taking over their equity actually it means we are simply preserving what we call the equity that means we are creating from our own resources this much of other equity item. So now the question is asking you uh, to be followed in the given situation and determine the amount of goodwill. So method of accounting of course pooling interest method this will be answer number one. You will have to apply the pooling interest method. Why? Because it is a case of common control. Number one. Second, we have to find out the goodwill. This is the question number one. This is the question number two. We have to find out the amount of goodwill and we have to pass the general entries. Now, in order to find out goodwill, first I would like you to understand the entries. In the books of, of course, Jet Limited. Now, Jet Limited is taking over X Limited and Y Limited. So, our see under common control reverse acquisition is not possible try to understand this point also reverse acquisition is possible only in case of acquisition method some of you might actually get confused by this particular fact also on the one hand i am saying that control is, is still in the hands of x and y so some of you might think sir it becomes a case of reverse acquisition it cannot be case of reverse acquisition because it is a case of common control in case of common control reverse acquisition is not possible so, in the books of Jet Limited, first of all, we are going to write, we, are, we will take over the net assets and so we are taking over the net assets and we will have to write it at book value. Now, we are taking over the net assets of X Limited and Y Limited. Net assets of X Limited is equal to 6 lakh and plus 5 lakh. So, I will note it down at book value, 11 lakh. Then, we will write here two liabilities. Liabilities are given in the question or net assets are given in the question. Only net assets are given so that when liabilities have already been incorporated. Then I will write here two consideration. How much consideration actually we are paying in this case? In the opening lines itself, it was given that we are issuing 4 lakh worth of what we call shares. We are issuing 4 lakh worth of shares to X Limited and 3,75,000 worth of shares to Y limited. So total 7,75,000 worth of share capital. So 7,75,000, 7,75,000. This is the amount of consideration. Now try to understand the point. Many among us, has, many among us actually have become, um, you can say accustomed to say that we are going to take over their other equity in fact just a moment ago i clarified this particular term we are not taking over their other equity rather we are preserving the entity of the other equity of the other entity now we will look into the other equity the other equity item is 3 lakh 50 and 3 lakh of the respective companies total it becomes 6 lakh 50 thousand so i will have to write here two other equity in fact, we are not taking over these equity. Now, from our own resources, actually, we have to create other equity. That is the point. 3 lakh plus 
थ्री लैख प्लस थ्री लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड सो सिक्स लैख फिफ्टी थाउजेंड वर्थ ऑफ इक्विटी विल बी क्रिएटेड बाई अस नाउ इट इज अट ऑफ लॉस टू यू टू द एक्वायर कंपनी यू कैन से इवन वेन वी मेक द पेमेंट दैट इज ऑल्सो कंसिडर्ड एज अट ऑफ लॉस बिकॉज आफ्टर ऑल वी आर मेकिंग ए पेमेंट सो ऑल इन ऑल इन योर माइंड नाउ यू थिंक ऑन सच लाइन्स दैट वी आर एक्चुअली पेइंग सेवन पॉइंट सेवन फाइव बिसाइड्स दैट वी आर क्रिएटिंग अदर इक्विटी सो टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर फ्रॉम आर साइड इज इक्वल टू हाउ मच दैट इज फोर्टीन पॉइंट टू फाइव टोटल एक्सपेंडिचर इज दिस मच एंड वी आर गेटिंग अगेंस्ट द डेट अगेंस्ट द सेम इलेवन लैक वर्थ ऑफ नेट एस इट्स ओनली सो फोर पॉइंट टू फाइव दैट विल बिकम ए लॉस टू बस करेक्ट सो लॉजिकली लॉस इज डेबिटेड ओवर हेयर इन दॉर्म ऑफ Actually, it, honestly speaking, loss, whether the balance arises over to the debit side or to the credit side, logically, in my opinion, we should write only capital reserve. We should not write goodwill. We should write capital reserve only. However, that's a different matter. That negative balance, because capital reserve. Suppose even here, if I would write capital reserve, so negative capital reserve also means goodwill. But logically, we should refrain from what we call writing word goodwill. Why I am saying so? Although in your module it is written goodwill, even while during the lectures, if you must have noticed, I had stressed upon this particular point that, in my opinion, in institutes policy of writing goodwill in case of common control is. I am not saying wrong or something like that. This is my personal opinion. It's not perfect. I should say I should use this particular word instead of saying it wrong. It is not perfect in the sense because if you go through Appendix C very clearly, Appendix C deals with common control. The first information, sorry, the first what we call rule over there is that the acquirer company will take over all the assets and liability at book values only. That means fair value will not be considered at all. Number one. Number two consideration will be recorded at nominal value. That's exactly we have recorded. And beside, we will preserve the other equity item, provided other equity items are positive. If there are negative item, then you need not require to write here other equity. If other equity items of the acquiring company are having positive balances, then you will have to actually create equivalent amount of other equity. That's fine. And there is another direction that that no new asset should be recognized. so if no new asset should be recognized logically i cannot write here goodwill that is why i am saying writing goodwill is wrong so but but your module contains the word goodwill so i am not i will not tell you not write goodwill you can go ahead with that is itself so debit balance is there so you can write here goodwill although perfect word is capital reserve whether there is debit balance or credit balance when you pass this particular entry it should be logically debited or credited to capital reserve because however it is not going to make any difference because i have already told you even in case if capital reserve happens to be deb debit balance indirectly it means goodwill only because negative capital reserve is nothing but capital loss and capital loss is nothing but goodwill however we should refrain from writing goodwill but your module has picked the word goodwill so you go ahead with that now that been under common control if you want to compute the goodwill now you can prepare a statement sort of form wherein you simply write consideration paid 7 lakh 75 other creation of other equity this much and then subtract from that the net assets then you will get the amount of goodwill so that is how you can do this question this is what exactly written over here and then i have already computed the amount of goodwill and this is this entry is correct they have written the correct entry and one more entry of course when you will discharge the amount of consideration your entry will be consideration account debit to equity share capital correct so this is how you will have to pass the entries in this case so 3 lakh 25000 will be your goodwill 7 lakh 75000 is the consideration and other equity you are creating so your total expenditure actually is this much you should not forget and total net assets which you have taken over is equal to 11 lakh so you will take the difference of 13 lakh 20 14 lakh 25 and 11 lakh it will be equal to 3 lakh 25000 is it clear to you or not now next question is related to internal reconstruction the following is the balance sheet of titanic limited as at 31st of march 2021 Now, Titanic Limited's balance sheet gives you the following information that they are having a share capital of eight lakh, and then reserve and surplus. Because note number one and two is written over here. Let's see what is written in note number one. 
Now question clarifies that actually as far as share capital is concerned, there are two types of share capital this time. One is 8% preference share capital of 2 lakh and 60,000 equity shares of rupees 6 lakhs. And as far as reserve and surplus is concerned, we have general reserve to the extent of 1 lakh 50 and profit or loss account balance statement of PL balance is negative balance. Correct? Now, further the question says that there are non current liability in the form of long term borrowings that is 6% debentures. And then as far as current liabilities is concerned, straight away 40,000 is written. Then as far as asset side is concerned, property plant and equity is equal to property plant and equipment is equal to 3 lakh then under current asset they have given you inventories, trade receivables and cash and cash equivalent. This is the situation given to you. Correct? Now, besides that, question also states that during the last few years the company is passing through a very critical time, bad time and it now puts the following scheme of reconstruction after the approval of tribunal. So after the approval of the court, we have decided to go for a scheme of reconstruction because right now we are passing through very bad time. That means our financial position is not very strong and we are virtually in a mess and rather there is a complete what we call you can say financial crisis. So each and under the scheme, what is written here, each existing equity share will be converted into one equity share of rupees three each. And such lines we will see to it later on now many among you might wonder sir first of all actually what is the scheme of reconstruction yes this is absolutely nice question so let's let me first of all make you understand what is the scheme of internal reconstruction see here suppose a company since a pretty long time let us say there is an entity and it is in the business since last 11 12 years and in the current year when i looked into the balance sheet of this particular company let us say on 31st of 3 2024 let us say this is the 15th year of its operation correct so at the end of the 15th year of its operation on 31st of 3 2024 when i looked into the balance sheet i found out some items like written over the debit side just to make the point just to make the point little bit what we got clear i have you, I'm using the T format. This is the asset side and let us say towards the asset side there are items like profit and loss account. There are items like underwriting commission, preliminary expenses, discount on shares, discount on debentures. Correct? Let us say such items are there towards the what we call asset side. Nowadays, actually, we prepare the balance sheet, not in this manner, as you know. Now, if there is a negative balance, it will be written under the reserve and surplus. Similarly, underwriting commission, preliminary expenses, discount on debentures will appear under other current assets. But anyway, these items, because it is a negative balance, and these last three items reflects last three items, underwriting commission, preliminary expense, discount on debenture, they simply reflect the fact that this company is not having sufficient amount of profits to write them off. All in all, what I intend to say is that when we come across the balance sheet of financials of an entity carrying what we call such items in the financial, it doesn't what we call bode very well regarding the financial position of that particular company. Anyone having even a vivid knowledge regarding the what we call accounts, he will immediately come to the conclusion that Right now, this company is passing through very bad times. It is complete in what we call disarray and there is complete what we call financial crisis. Because otherwise, if you are in the trade since last 15 years, logically such items should not appear towards the asset, towards the asset side, I shouldn't say, but rather in your what we call financial statements. Is it clear to you or not? So when a company realizes that over a period of time, we have accumulated lots of what we call uh, deferred expenditures and lots of accumulated losses because last three items are examples of deferred expenditure correct which logically should have been written off but we couldn't uh, wrote them off because of lack of profit and there is what we call accumulated loss in the form of profit or loss account debit balance likewise let us say there is an item in the books property plant and equipment 
and it is written let us say at 15 lakh in the outer column whereas its market value is just about let us say 9 lakh this is another symptom of the fact that this company is lacking sufficient amount of profit why because logically we have reflected this item as 15 lakh whereas its market value is just 9 lakh that means the recoverable amount is actually 9 lakh and as you know if your recoverable amount is less logically this asset should have been reflected at 9 lakh but in order to reduce this asset from 15 to 9 i need i must be in a position to write off the impairment loss but i am not able to do so because i am not having the what we call required amount of profit so there are these are symptoms which points to the fact that company is passing through a phase of virtual financial crisis. So that is the reason company more often than not in order to overcome such a financial mess goes for any scheme which is better known as scheme of internal reconstruction. Correct? So under the, the basic idea of internal reconstruction scheme is the basic idea of internal reconstruction scheme is a to write off as i told you to write off overvalued items overvalued items basic idea is to write off overvalued items for example in this case property plant and equipment is overvalued because it is written at 15 lakh while its real value is just about 9 lakh so the overvalued portion is 6 lakh. So this scheme is adopted to write off overvalued items and B to write off accumulated losses as I told you like profit and loss account and C deferred expenditure deferred expenditure like preliminary expenses, underwriting commission, discount on debenture etc. Correct? Or for that instance, any other item, which question may ask us to write, write off. So logically, the basic idea of internal reconstruction scheme is this one, first of all, number one. Now, how this scheme is adopted and put into implementation? Now, suppose if there is a particular company and it wants to adopt the scheme of internal reconstruction, what it will do? Because ultimately, it wants to achieve what we call such targets. But in order to achieve such target, company must have are you getting my point or not? Money. So try to understand this. We, we presume that this company is having 1 lakh equity shares and each share is of rupees 10 inch and total share capital is equal to 10 lakh. Is it clear to you? How many number of equity shares we are having? 1 lakh. What is the face value? That is 10. Now suppose, now suppose directors of this company tell to the shareholder, we are converting your equity shares from 10 to 3 only. So I will pass an entry like this. Equity share capital, that is old equity share capital. Old equity share capital is 1 lakh share of 10 each. I will cancel it out. It is a credit balance. I will debit it. And then I will write two new equity share capital account. The new equity share capital account will be 1 lakh shares of 3 because we have asked the shareholder that we are going to convert your share of your share from 10 to 3. And then I will pass. Then I will write two reconstruction accounts. You can also write to capital reduction account. I will write here 1 lakh into 7. 1 lakh into 7, that is equal to 7 lakh. Indirectly, when I converted the equity share capital, I means the director of the company converted the amount of equity share capital from 1 lakh into 10 to 1 lakh into 3 indirectly means company has saved 7 lakh rupees because now company need not require to pay 7 lakh to the equity shareholder. So this will be considered as gain and whatever gain company will accumulate, those will be transferred to reconstruction account. That means under the scheme of internal reconstruction, what this particular company is going to do, it is going to actually first of all request its 
contributories like equity share capital like preference shareholder even to the lenders like what we call debenture holders and if the need arises perhaps even to the creditors company will try to put up a request before these contributories equity share capital preference shareholder and lenders like debenture holder that right now the situation is quite not up to the mark so we would like you to actually this time help us out by reducing a part of your contribution is it clear to you or not so now we are requesting to the equity shareholder that we are reducing your share capital from 10 to 3 correct now the main question is that it looks very easy now some of you might be blinking your eyes sir how come it is possible because in practical life let us say mr a has given 10 lakh worth of rupees to mr b mr a has given 10 lakh to mr b and tomorrow mr b turns up and tells to mr a that mr a please you presume that you have given me not 10 lakh but only 3 lakh suppose if b says to a now what will happen after that i need not require to tell you from one end we will have an ambulance and from the other end we will have the police a fight will take place between these two. So, if the director of the company are going to put up such a request to the equity shareholder, do you think that equity shareholder are going to accept it on the face? No one, no sane person, no sane person, anyone worth his salt, no one is going to actually bear this injustice. It is virtual injustice. If I have given 10 lakh to somebody, that person comes to me and tells that, presume that you have given me only 3 lakh. I am not an insane person. To simply what we call say, yes. So logically, it looks that equity shareholder will not agree to this. But the fact is that whenever directors will call a meeting with respect to what we call implementation of internal reconstruction scheme, and when they will tell the equity shareholder their proposal that we are reducing your share from 10 to 3, to be very honest with you, no equity shareholder will protest no one will raise any voice, no one will shout out, no one will feel irritated, rather they will feel simply helpless, simply because, simply because equity shareholders are not in a position to say yes or no. Equity shareholders are not in a position to say yes or no. Why? Because if equity shareholder will protest, okay, well, no, this injustice is unbearable. We are not going to accept this, unacceptable. What will happen? The scheme of internal reconstruction will not take place. Now, if the scheme of internal reconstruction will not take place, then what will happen? Ultimately, this company will get liquidated. Ultimately, this company will get liquidated because of this position. Then what will happen? If the company will get liquidated, the equity shareholder will lose entire 10 lakh. Because when a company gets liquidated, re under the repayment order, equity shareholder is the last party. And 99.99% are there, chances are there, in fact, to be very honest, 100% chances are there that they are not going to get a single penny back. Are you getting my point or not? So, they are not in a position to say no. So, quite obviously, if you are not in a position to say no, obviously, it means you will have to say yes. So, that is the reason equity shareholder will have to suffer a lot because they will hope that at least perhaps in future, uh, the trend will change and perhaps then we, we, we would be able to recover at least some, some of our losses which right now we are bearing. So this is the reason in practical life when meetings are held with respect to implementation of a scheme of internal reconstruction, even equity shareholders do not attend those meetings to be very honest with you. Now you know the reason because they are not in a position to say either yes or no, simply they will have to accept the what we call proposals. Similar request will be made to preference shareholder. Let us say this company are, let us say, presume this company is having 10% preference share capital and we presume there are 5,000 shares of 100 each. Total preference share capital say is equal to 5 lakh in this imaginary example I am talking about. Now when directors of the company tell to the preference shareholder, let us say they are making a request to the preference shareholder that we would like your share to be converted from 100 to 80 or to 20. Generally, in case of preference shareholder, director will not take a very daring step to reduce their amount by a big margin. 
बिकॉज इन डेट केस प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर विल नॉट कीप वाइट टू बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट विद यू बिकॉज जनरली प्रेफरेंस शेयर होल्डर आर ऑन ए सेफर ग्राउंड Why they are on a safer ground? Because tomorrow, even if this this particular company would get liquidated, so preference shareholder will get preference in comparison to equity shareholder as far as repayment is concerned. So that is the reason, more or less, they are quite on the safer ground in the sense that they know that their investment is not in danger. If they will be able to get back their amount, so quite obviously, preference shareholder are not going to cooperate us so easily. so in order to earn their cooperation we have to lure them lure them means we have to put up a bait before them that mean for example directors are telling to the shareholder we will raise your rate of dividend from 10% to 15% but at the same time we are reducing your share capital from 100 to 80 so perhaps now the equity shareholder may agree to these terms is it clear to you so 5000 into 40 that is the new preference share capital and whatever what we call balance is there that is savings for us this balance will be transferred to reconstruction account similar sort of request may be made to what we call deventure holders in order to earn their cooperation as i said we have to lure them in the form of higher rate of interest correct so after making request and persuading these parties whatever amount we would be saved that will be transferred to an account as i told you reconstruction account now the total balance available in reconstruction account then will be utilized in writing off what we call all the all the all such sort of items is it clear to you or not that is the scheme of internal reconstruction first of all you need to understand that now we move back to the question so in this particular question during the we have already gone through the question now you must understand that here we have got equity share capital preference share capital and there is a negative balance in the profit and loss account 1 lakh 20000 and it's quite a heavy in if we took relative figures so, so it is quite a heavy balance during the last two uh, we have already gone through this line now what is the scheme of internal reconstruction so now you will be in a better position to comprehend it each existing equity share to be converted into one equity share of 3 each so each equity share which is at this moment is of 10 so it is being reduced to what we call 3 per share what will be your entry equity share capital old account debit to new equity share capital to reconstruction account this is the entry which we have to pass as we can see our old equity share capital is equal to 60000 shares of 10 each 6 lakh correct now we have reduced it to 3 so this will become over two new equity share capital 60000 into 3 1 lakh 80 in the new balance sheet now equity share capital will figure at 1 lakh 80 and this is the what we call gain to us to reconstruction account 4 lakh 20000 is it clear to you second point 8% preference shares are to be converted into such number of 16% preference shares of ended is so as to generate the same amount of dividend as before now here question is telling that 8% preference share are to be converted into such number of 16% preference shares of ended each so as to generate the same amount of dividend as before what does it mean first of all i will have to look into the preference share capital now preference share capital as you can see is equal to 2 lakh and there are 2000 preference shares of 100 each is it clear to you i will explain this point here my original preference share capital is 8% preference share capital and amount is rupees 2 lakh now if i compute dividend it will be equal to 16000 that mean presently i am earning if suppose i am the preference shareholder of this particular company then i am earning an interest of and dividend of 16000 now question says that this company in order to persuade the preference shareholder tells them that we are going to issue you 16% preference shares so earlier you were having 8% now we are going to give you 16% preference shares we will issue you so much worth of preference share that your rate of dividend is still which you will get is equal to 16000 this is the proposal we will issue you now 16% preference share capital and the rate of dividend which you will get on the preference share capital which we do not know at this moment will be equal to 16000 now i can say 16% of what 
this is what equal to 16,000 so I can find it out 16,000 into 100 I will divide it by 16 so it will tell me the figure that is equal to 1 lakh so that mean that means against 8% preference share capital which is 2 lakh this company will offer 16% preference share capital of 1 lakh only of 1 lakh only are you getting my point or not so amount which we have saved is equal to reconstruction that is 1 lakh so we are telling to the preference shareholder you need not require to worry surfacially we, we might have reduced your share capital from 2 lakh to 1 lakh but you need not require to bother about the dividend you are getting the same dividend correct so this is how I am going to write the entry here 8% preference share capital account debit that is 2 lakh and then to 16% preference share capital which I just saw, saw it uh, sorry worked out so reconstruction account is equal to 1 lakh this will be the entry which we are going to pass further the question says that each 100 debenture each 100 debenture are to be exchanged for 1 rupees 50 debenture and six new equity shares of rupees three each what does it mean first of all let us have a look over the amount of debentures where was the debenture the six percent debenture it is given in the question six percent debentures of hundred each six percent debentures of hundred each we are having six percent debentures of hundred each and total amount is one thousand that means originally we must be having one thousand debentures of 100 each that is why 1 lakh one debenture is 100 and their rate of interest is this much now what we are telling to the debenture holders each 100 debenture are to be exchanged for 1 rupees 50 because earlier original debentures are 1000 into 100 now we are telling them that we are going to issue you to be exchanged for 1 rupees 50 so we are going to give you 1 rupees 50 but the new debenture will carry a rate of interest earlier 6% now we will give you 12% interest correct not only this each debenture holder now earlier your value was 100 indirectly it is reduced to 50 because now your 100 worth of debenture is being exchanged against what we call debenture of rupees 50 correct but at the same time, we are also offering you six new equity shares of three each. Six new equity shares of three each. There are 1,000 debentures and we are offering you six new equity shares. So, total equity share we, we will offer to you 1,000 into six, 6,000. And as we know now, the nominal value of equity share capital is three because earlier it was reduced from 10 to three. So this is the entry you are going to pass here. 6% debenture account debit to 12% debenture account 1000 into 50 to equity share capital 1000 into 6. Each equity shareholder will get 6. Each debenture holder will get 6 equity share. So this is the entry which you are supposed to pass. Correct? So this is the entry here I have passed. You can see 6% debenture account. Now to 12% debenture account 1000 debenture at the rate of 50, 50,000 and we have issued them equity share to 1000 debenture each debenture will get 6 equity share of rupees 3 each 18,000 so we will save 32,000 it will be transferred to reconstruction account now after this because no further information is given after this I will tally up the total amount which is now available in the reconstruction account so let's look into the entry where reconstruction is getting credited 4 lakh 20 then 1 lakh 520 and then it is given it is given it is given uh, 32 so 5 lakh 20 plus 32 5 lakh 52,000 is the total balance now in the reconstruction account actually in this question one more information is given with respect to general reserve question says that reduction in just wait Question says that reduction of capital. Reduction of capital means total amount now available in reconstruction balance. That is 5,52. And balance of general reserve will be utilized for writing off 60% of the inventory 
and daters. That means we have to write 60% of the inventory and daters. And if there is balance, that will be used for writing down property, plant and equipment. So indirectly, question is telling that whatever amount you have accumulated in your uh, reconstruction account and whatever balance in reserve is there. Now in the question, there is general reserve. So that is why I have taken general reserve also. That means this much amount we accumulated through reduction in capital and this much amount we are using from general reserve because available balance in general reserve is 1,50,000. We are having at this particular moment, you can say total amount is equal to 7,2,000. This 7 lakh, out of this 7,2,000, first of all, you need to understand that under the scheme of internal reconstruction, whether there is any information or not related to profit and loss account debit balance that must be written off. In this question, there is no information. Still, you will have to write it off. Similarly, you will have to write off any deferred expenditure in respect, irrespective of the fact whether any, any information is uh, uh, there or not. And then you must take into account the information. Now, as per the information, you will write 60% of the inventory, then daters 1,65,000. So this is the balance from 7 lakh 2000 you will subtract all these figures. So this is the balance. Question says that whatever balance is there, that balance will be used in writing of property, plant and equipment. Is it clear to you or not? And then you can prepare the balance sheet also. It is not very difficult. Now share capital 2 lakh 98,000 is given to you. It is very easy to compute the balance of the share capital. I tell you, you can take the calculator and compute it within a flick of second. For example, there is a credit balance 8 lakh. Correct? You type in your computer 8 lakh. Then, after 8 lakh, you look into the entries which you just passed. In the entries, we have debited equity share capital by what we call, sorry, in our equity share capital balance was 6 lakh. Equity share capital original balance is not 8 lakh, that is 6 lakh. Then you debit what we call, you have debited 6 lakh. So right now balance is 0. Now you have credited 180, so present balance is 180, then equity share capital, equity share capital, again 18,000. So you can see actually 1 lakh, 1 lakh 80 plus 18,000. So now equity share capital is, we can say is equal to this much. So that is why equity share capital, here it is written in this banner, 1 lakh 98,000. 1,80,000 plus 18,000, which I was telling you. So, balance in equity share capital is this much. Balance in preference share capital will be 1 lakh. So, total balance you will be, you, you are going to write here 2,98,000. Now, debentures, 50,000. Why? Because we had actually uh, 2 lakh or 1 lakh worth of debenture. And against the 1 lakh worth of debenture, we have issued 12% 12, 12, 12 debenture of 50,000. So, we will write here 50,000. Then current liability, property, plant and equipment. Whatever property, plant and equipment was there earlier, that is 3 lakh. And you wrote it off by 2 lakh 22,000. So, the balance over here is 78,000. Then likewise, inventory. You have written off inventory by 60%. So, present inventory will be 3 lakh 25,000 into 40%. Or... You simply subtract from 3,25,000 the amount of inventory which you have written off, 1,30,000, similarly with respect to daters and cash and cash equivalent. Correct? So, it is not a very tough, tough what we call concept, internal reconstruction. And these are the working which I have been doing a lot. See, these are the total, I have already told you earlier, 7,2,000 amount, correct? You had... 5,52,000 by way of reduction in capital and then 1,50,000 by way of what we call general reserve. So, total amount which you are having 7,2,000. Out of 7,2,000, you utilize 1,20,000 to write off profit or loss account, 1,95,000 you wrote off stock and likewise status. So, balancing figure 2,22,000 will be used in writing of property, plant and equipment. This we have already done. So, and I'm looking at the time figure just to watch whether I have got time to actually solve this question. I have solved this question, in fact. This question is straight away from our notes. Question number 20. Correct? If you will, if you have subscribed to our courses, you can see question number 20 of share-based payment. And these questions are absolutely same, except that here the figures are doubled. And the question number 20 of our study material, which we have supplied to the students, Correct, over their figures are one half of this. 
So, it's not a very tough question to be very honest with you, but at the same time, uh, if I will start this question, then the time limit which is attached to uh, the normal course, that means because we generally keep a time of one hour or something like this, correct? So, after this, chances of there that if I'm going to start the question, if I'm not able to complete then midway the class may get abruptly ended so no no problem we will take up the remaining question in the upcoming session so for today because today i had to explain the entire concept of the internal reconstruction so hope that in spite of all this thing today's session would have been come up to your must have been come up to your expectation looking forward to have your feedback as always so till then it's time to say goodbye